Before I get on to factorising determinants, I'm going to be going through all the rules that you are allowed to do in order to manipulate determinants to make the problem easier. Okay, to make a matrix easier to find its determinant. Okay, once you understand these rules, then factorising determinants, uh, you'll be able to see what you'll need to do at each stage. Okay, so let's crack on. So the first thing to look out for is that you can add any row or column to any other row or column without changing the value of the determinant. Okay, so if you're trying to work out this, for example, okay, you are perfectly free to add row 3, for example, to row 1. So if you did that, you'd have 3 plus negative 3, 2 plus 4, and 1 plus 1. OK, and the value of this determinant is going to be precisely the same as this one. Likewise, you can subtract any row or column from any other row or column. So you could do, for example, um, row 1 take away row 2. OK, so the new row 1 is row, the old row 1 take away row 2. So 8 take away 8 is 0, 4 take away 1 is 3, 3 take away 3 is 0. And you've still got the 8, 1, 3, 2, 2, minus 1. And that will make finding the determinant a whole lot easier. You can also add any multiple of any row or column to any other row or column. Okay, just like doing effectively, you're doing repetition of the previous two. Okay, and that, that's the same for subtraction. So um, maybe you want to knock out that nine, for example, and you go right. Well, if I take away three lots of this column, I can do that. Um, so I can do uh, column one. The new column 1 is going to be the old column 1, take away 3 lots of column 3. OK, so I'm going to have 6 take away 3, so 3. 2 take away uh, 6, which is minus 4. And then 9 take away 9, so 0. And then 4, 5, minus 3, 1, 2, 3. OK, and I've simplified uh, the determinant down. Now, if you'd prefer uh, to have one row at the top or one column to the far left, for example, okay, uh, then you can do that. You can swap uh, two rows or columns, and what's going to happen is that it's just going to change the sign of the determinant. So, for example, if you wanted to make that middle row, uh, the one at the far left, uh, sorry, the middle column at the far left, then you can do that. But just stick a minus sign in front, and you'll have 1, minus 3, 6, 0, 7, 5, 0, 4, 7. OK? And then you can find that determinant there. Now, what is very useful to keep under your belt is the fact that when any two rows or columns are equal, the determinant has to be 0. Now, you might be wondering as to why that is the case, OK, um, which I'll show. I mean, if you wanted to find the determinant of this, then if you're doing this by hand, it'd be quite an epic one, OK? Uh, but notice that the top row and the bottom row are precisely the same. If you use the, one of the uh, previous rules, OK, so um, let's say you did uh, row 1 take away row 4, then what you would have is you would have 0, 0, 0, 0 in the top row, OK? And so when expanding the determinant, you just get 0. So if you spot that one row uh, is the same as another row or one column is the same as another column, then you know that the determinant has to be 0. Now, it can sometimes be useful to multiply a row or column through by a value, uh, to maybe to get rid of fractions, for example, like in this one. Maybe you want to multiply uh, this column through by 2 to make the numbers nicer to work with. Okay? Now, you can perfectly well do that. OK, uh, but just be aware that that's going to multiply the determinant by the value as well. OK, so if you want to, you can factor out the half from that first column. OK, and so factoring out the half, you're going to get 1, 2 and 3. OK, in that first column now, then 4, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3. OK. Now, another example of that, okay, so let's say you had um, uh, 2, 4, 6, uh, 2, 8, 10, uh, 4, 6, 8. 
and you looked at that and went, right, all of the um, all of the values are even, so I could factor out two. Okay. Now, if you do that, you'd be doing that for each of the rows or each of the columns. So, in actual fact, if you want to factor two out of the whole thing, you've got to factor out two cubed. Okay. So you would be factoring out the two from the first column, for example. Okay. Then, so that would get you uh, one, two, three. Then you would factor up 2 from the middle column, so we up to 2 squared, so then 1, 4, 5. And then 2 from the third column, so we do now 2 cubed, so 2, 3, 4. And so you would have 8 out the front. Okay? So if you factor something out the whole matrix, so if it's a 3 by 3, then whatever number it is gets cubed out the front. Now, the last thing to be aware of is that the value of the transpose of a determinant is the same as the determinant's original value. So the, det the transpose, what that does is it keeps the leading diagonal, the principal diagonal, okay, exactly the same. So 1, 5, 9. Uh, but uses that as a mirror line. Okay, so the 2 and the 4 will swap. The 3 and the 7 will swap. And the 6 and the 8 will swap. OK, so the determinant uh, of each of those two matrices would be exactly the same. Now, with these in mind, we'll be able to deal with factorising determinants. So we will have something that is wholly algebraic, OK, and we'll be able to factorise um, the determinants uh, step by step by using these rules um, and that will make the process easier. Otherwise, if you were to just expand out um, a determinant um, from scratch and then try and factorise, it is a whole lot harder to do. So the idea is to simplify down using these rules as far as possible and then um, to make your matrix that you're actually going to find the determinant from a whole lot easier at each stage. Okay, and we're going to see some examples of that in the coming videos.